Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me. I am Wasima Zahib and I will be talking about LinkedIn and self-branding in this next one hour. So I'll start with my own introduction. Um, I am the president of Pakistani Women in Computing and also a principal engineering manager in Microsoft. I have been in the tech industry for over 13 years, which is a really, really long time. I'm originally from Islamabad and I graduated from NAS back in 2006. The picture on the top uh, right of the screen is the very first time when I actually did a conference in front of 200 plus people at AFIC in Islamabad and uh, Rawalpindi actually. And that's a reminder for me to actually look back and see how far I've come and what I've achieved. A uh, fun fact about myself, I'm a mother of three girls, including twins. And I am involved in a lot of diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. So a part of that is Pakistani Women in Computing. So I'm really, really happy and proud about this Get High 2020 event that we are doing in US and Pakistan. The Pakistan event is on October 2nd, and I hope I'm hoping that you have heard from a lot of great speakers since morning talking about how do you build a strong resume. How do you build, how do you actually make a strong first impression? And also some generic guidelines about interviewing in tech fields. This session is very specific to LinkedIn and how you can use LinkedIn to actually advance your career and what are the benefits and what are certain features that you might not know about. One small fact, this presentation is actually part of the LinkedIn coaching. So I am an official LinkedIn coach and these slides are actually official material from LinkedIn. So I'm really, really happy and excited to share it with our PWIC tribe and PWIC community today. So the agenda for today's session is I'm going to talk about what is LinkedIn. I'm going to level set about LinkedIn and how LinkedIn is different than other social media platforms. Then I'm going to talk about your professional brand. What is your presence? How do you actually make sure that you stand out in your online presence? Again, in the context of LinkedIn. The session is, as, as I said, is all about LinkedIn. Then I'm going to talk about the basics of LinkedIn profile. What are the must haves that you should do today and update your LinkedIn profile? We will talk about networking. How do you network on LinkedIn? How do you connect with other folks on LinkedIn? How do you connect and find opportunities? How do you use certain features in LinkedIn that you might not be knowing about? And there are some interesting um, things that I want to share and some stats also regarding that. And the last, I have exercise for all of you to do. So if you can all actually do that and update your LinkedIn profile after this session, even two or five of you have done that after this session, I think I, I would, it would have done justice with this session. So let's get started. So the very first thing, the very most important thing that I'd really want all of you to know is LinkedIn is not as, is the same as a lot of these other social media platforms. For example, if you're eating a donut, you'll take a picture of that and you'll put it on Instagram and you'll say that here is a cool photo of me eating donut, right? The, the other social media platforms like Snapchat, Facebook, Pinterest, all of these have different purposes. The only reason why you should put a picture of donut on LinkedIn is if you're doing one of these things. This is just a hypothetical example so that you understand what is LinkedIn really used for. It is a professional network. It's not sharing random quotes over there. It's not sharing about what you feel about life. It's about how that impacts your professional life and how it impacts your connections. So LinkedIn, if you are sharing a picture of donor, some of the reasons could be that you're looking a job at a donor company or your top skills are actually in donor production and sales. So that would be a good reason why you would actually post about a donut picture on LinkedIn. So just repeating that, make sure that you understand different social media platforms and why you want to use them. I know in some cases we have lots of friends in the same place and colleagues. So we tend to actually share stuff that does not belong in LinkedIn. So again, make sure that you understand the difference and you post stuff in LinkedIn, which is related to your professional network. I wanted to share this stat with you. 
nine out of 10 employers actually use LinkedIn as part of their hiring process. So at some point in their hiring process, they actually looked at your LinkedIn profile. This is a fact. So just let that sink in. So if you have not updated your LinkedIn profile and does not have the right information, there's a higher chance that the employer is not going to select you or, or, or take you to the next step. So it's really, really important nowadays, nowadays to actually go in and update your LinkedIn profile and keep it current. And I'm going to talk to you about all of the features and all of the things that you should do today. I'll start with some other interesting facts as well. LinkedIn has about 50 million employers every single day. And it has millions of job opportunities. There are more than 706 million professionals and over 200 from 200 different countries that are actually active on LinkedIn. That's a lot of people. There are a lot of LinkedIn groups also. A lot of you might not know that, but LinkedIn groups is a great way to actually meet like-minded folks, connect with them, share stuff, and actually get to know them. So that's another thing that you can actually look at. And I'll talk to you about all the other features in this presentation as well. So let's start with the first thing, which is a professional brand. What is your professional brand and how do you define that? Before I define your professional brand, let me ask you to tell me what makes a good brand? How would you identify your brand and show that you are the right choice for the employer? So let's take example of what makes a good brand. Why would you buy a particular brand over the other one? It may be because of the usability. It may be because of their, how they market it. It may be because of just the features. So think of you as a brand. When I'm looking at your profile, be it LinkedIn profile or your resume or anything that I know about you, why should I hire you? How do you stand out with the rest of 100, let's say, folks that have applied for the same role? So what that particular reason why I would hire you is the very reason that your social brand exists. So it's very important for you to identify what makes you unique, what is in your profile that is unique about you, and that particular thing is your professional brand. So let's let's say you 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 want to define your professional brand, but you don't know where to start, right? So I'll give you some pointers. Where can you start? Where can you start building your professional brand, and where can you start putting that out in your LinkedIn and other social media as, as well? So you must be thinking, so wait, I have my own brand? Yes. So who are you? That's the question you need to answer. And what makes you unique? As an employer, you shape your future. You can shape your brand by the way you present yourself to others. What you put out on your social media, especially on LinkedIn, is your online professional brand, is how I will find more about you I will get to know more about you and I can understand how you're good versus the rest of the employers as well, the rest, of the rest of the candidates as well. Why do we need to do this? Why do you need to actually have a brand? Is the same as why should I choose you? So why so many companies spend so much time on their branding? Why do we spend a lot of time building up these logos for, let's say, Get Hired event? Because we want you to know that this is our thing. This is, this is who we are. Same exists for you when you're applying for roles. So why I should choose you is the reason why there is a brand about you. I really, really highly want you to recommend, recommend to you that you should think about what makes you unique. What are your top strengths? What are your top weaknesses? And start from there. So why would you show an employer that you are the right choice? You can do that by providing them these three things. 
starting off with your skills, showing them that you have a network and the information that you carry. So LinkedIn has a lot of greater features where you can share information, you can write articles, you can actually communicate with other people as well and, and connect with them and, and all of those things. So define your professional band, brand by showing that you have these skills, you have this network and you know this information. And one thing that a lot of you do forget is beyond the skills and information that you carry and the network that you have, you have certain values and goals. LinkedIn is the perfect place to actually put that out there as well. Because in resume, you don't have enough, enough space left to actually write down what are all the other things that you do. For example, in my LinkedIn profile, I have all of my volunteer work mentioned there, including Pakistani women in computing and others because i want my future employer to know that i'm not just about my technical skills or my leadership skills but actually this is one of the passions that i have so that is one of the values or one of my passions that i've put the put it out in my linkedin profile so do consider those things also when you're looking at your linkedin profile what makes you unique what are your passions what are your values and at some point also think about what are your goals LinkedIn has a section, I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes, where you can definitely put your future goals, next one to three year goals over there. So a future employer or a current employer can look at that and think about where you want to head over. Especially if you're transitioning, there is a space that you can definitely add information where somebody can get more information about you, what you're trying to do and what is what are your some of the goals. At any point in the presentation, if you have any questions, please leave them in the chat. I have the chat right next to me here, and I'll be answering those as I go. So I have a small activity for you. I'll take a pause here and actually look at the chat for everyone who is, who is watching. If you can take a minute to define what are the three words that how your friends define you, that are unique about you, Tell me three words how your colleagues define you. So think about how would your friend define you? Are you a loyal friend? Are you somebody who's trustworthy? What are those three features, top three things, your top three strengths, how your friends define you? And think about a, a future colleague. If you're a current student, then think about your fellow student who have, you have done a project with. How would they define you? What are those three terms they will use? And I'll look at the chat and see what are your thoughts about that? And the reason you're doing this activity is these three things are really good starting point for you to actually put them in your LinkedIn profile. So let's let's check on the chat if you have if you have some um, some words that your friends would define you. I think that would help shape how you actually put in your LinkedIn profile. Some of the examples of uh, how somebody as your colleague can define you is you could be a good team player, you could be passionate, you could be technical, they could say that you are the best AI learner. I see somebody saying loyal, logical thinker, brilliant. Awesome. I love the logical thinker part over there. You have somebody saying passionate, enthusiastic and determined. Really great. So keep them coming in. The reason why I'm having this exercise with you right now is for you to reflect what are your top three strengths, how you are known by your friends and your colleagues. That is a starting point for you to actually build your brand. That is your brand. Those are the things how people know about you. In the same way, how you have strengths, I would like you to, you don't have to put that in the chat, but take a paper and pen and write down the three things that your friends and colleague, colleagues might think that you're not good at. That is another way for you to reflect. Those are the strengths and things you might need to work on. So I have somebody saying communications, analytical and collaborative. Love the word collaborative. 
In any team that you work with, even if you're an individual contributor, collaboration is something that you really, really need. Without collaboration, there is no work. Even if you are writing your code and writing it uh, like as a single commit in your GitHub or wherever, that, that code has to be used by somebody else. And if you do not communicate with other folks and do not work well with other folks, that code is not going to make art. Uh, it's not going to be useful anyway. So I, I really like the word collaborative. You see somebody saying passionate, high achiever, supportive, and then loyal, trustworthy, and honest. Amazing. And I have determined, logical, and neutral. That's 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 interesting, especially the neutral part. So, again, why are we talking about your strengths and why are we talking about your weaknesses? Because though that is what your your brand is. So you have to go take some time today to actually write it down. If you don't know it, go ask your friends. Ask them to define how they see you. If you're really close friends, you can definitely ask some feedback. You can ask them what are the things that you should improve. Those would be your goals for next three months, six months, one year to think about how you can improve your skills. If you have a professor in your university, go ask them your technical skills, ask them about some other feedback that you have. Those are the things that you will start with, with your professional plan. So let's, let's, let me summarize what we did so far. We talked about your professional brand. We talked about why we use LinkedIn. And then we talked about top three things, how your friends define you and how your colleagues define you. The reason to have these words at top of your head is in a few minutes, we are going to talk about your LinkedIn profile. And we need those words to actually put in, in our heading as well as in our summary. So if you don't have those words coming right now, please take some time to write down if you don't know still, go ask your friends, have a, have a nice coffee chat with them or tea chat with them and ask them to tell you what your top three strengths are. Because you will be surprised sometimes, uh, you would think of some other stuff, they might give you some feature that you might not have thought about because some of your close friends know you the best. Same thing, if you have a good colleague that you've worked with, a pro person who's done a project with, ask them to give you feedback. If, they, if uh, constructive feedback to improve, and if you have some skills that you they want to share with you, ask them. And you will find that those two things would be very close. There would not be much difference. If they are very, very far apart, let's say your friends say that you are the best technical person in the world, and the, and the person that you work with does not think so, then there's some work for you to do. Because that's that's where there should be the most alignment. Of course, your friends know you in some other ways. There would be some different things, for example, loyalty and those things might not be in your with your colleagues list. But think about that. So try to think about those three two things in different ways and see how you can align them. What are your strengths and what you can improve? And that is a starting point for your brand, your professional brand and your personal brand in terms of your friends. So now we'll switch gears towards LinkedIn profile. If you have any questions about link, the branding perspective, please feel free to put it in the chat and I will actually answer that. So I have a question here about networking uh, from Asma. Please hold on on that question. We will definitely talk about that in later part of this presentation about how to use LinkedIn for networking. How do you find folks on, network, uh, on LinkedIn and how do you connect with them and what is the right way of doing that? So thank you for that question. So just to summarize about our professional brand, why you should have a professional brand and a strong LinkedIn profile is show the employers that you are the right choice. And one part that I already said, but I'll just repeat, that be careful what you put out there. Because these days, everything is online, right? Anybody can go and search on your name and find out what you've been doing. They can find about the articles that you've been reading, writing, the blogs that you've been writing, the engagement that you have on social media, if you have public accounts especially, everything can be visible. So be careful about that because employers these days spend a bunch of time, especially the recruiters spend some, some time on LinkedIn to find out more about you and beyond LinkedIn also sometimes. So if you go Google my, my name, you'll find all the stuff that I do, especially with 
for with PWIC. Same things you can find about other folks as well. So you can actually go Google yourself, Bing yourself, check all of these search search uh, platforms and see what are the stuff. What is the stuff that is out there? So again, be careful what you put out there because it's really hard to put them like take that down once it's out there. So we are done with the the branding part of the this session. So we will move on to the LinkedIn profile, and I will talk about the main sections about LinkedIn, what you should improve. And I would have an exercise for you at the end of this session to actually go and do that today. And I'll be checking with you on Slack, the Slack that we have for Get Hired, to see if you have done that. And in future also, if you need any updates, if you want me to review your LinkedIn profile, I'll be more than happy to actually do that. So starting LinkedIn profile, the very first step is you need to create a profile. If you don't have a profile, um, please go ahead and do that today. As I said, for your professional career journey, LinkedIn is the platform. Nine out of 10 employers are actually using it to screen candidates, to find candidates. So please, please, please invest in some time on LinkedIn and go ahead and create your LinkedIn profile today. After you have created profile, there's this common question a lot of people ask is what's the difference between LinkedIn and resume or your CV? So I will tell you, this is my perspective and this is how LinkedIn thinks and how they are different. LinkedIn is a 360 degree view of you. It talks about not just your skills, your achievements, your coursework and things like that. It also talks about other things like what makes you unique? What are your passions? What are the all the volunteer work that you've done? There is a section for volunteer work all by itself. There is a section for all the awards that you've won or all the recognitions that you have done. If you have any publications, there's a section for that. Some of that actually belongs in your resume as well. But resume, as I said, has a limited space. There's a lot of focus on resume to actually put in the skills that you need for the job that you're applying. Resume could be different for every role as well. And I'm, I'm hoping that you've heard that from the session this morning and all the other recordings that we have on uh, PWIC page. So resume is, is a summary of everything. It's a very short summary. It talks about what you've done and why you're applying for this role. LinkedIn is actually going beyond that. It talks about all the other things, all of your experiences, your skills, what you're good at, and then all the other things that makes you unique. It could be the volunteer work, it could be a, a student committee that you're lead of, or something like that. And also talks about your future passions. So I'll explain that in a few seconds, in a few minutes, how, where you can put that. So that's the big difference between the two. And you can read through that and, and, and talk about that. Resume is only when you're applying for a particular role. LinkedIn is out there and anybody can go and find that. So it's, it's talking and it's talking to your future employer. So if, for example, if I'm not in the market right now to actually switch jobs, my LinkedIn profile should still reflect what I'm doing. So if a future employer has an interest, they can still reach out to me and say, we have this role. Would you like to apply for it? And you never know. A lot of my job switches actually happen through LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is a very, very, very powerful tool. And I would highly, highly recommend you to actually look at it, build a very strong profile and stand out. And this session should help you with that. So starting with the first thing that you need to do. <clears throat> I have a lot, <clears throat> I have a lot of people reach out to me on LinkedIn. And most of the time I don't know who they are and how do they look. Because they either don't have a picture or if they have a picture, it's really old. Or it's, it's, it's a black picture or something like an avatar or something like that. So the very first step that you have to do today, please, please, please do that. Take a picture of yourself with a good background. And you don't need any fancy equipment to do that. Just, just ask your friend or family member, stand in front of a wall, smile, and be yourself. There's a good example of a picture right next, uh, right in this slide. It, it, it is shown by LinkedIn data that profiles with pictures actually get 21 times more views and nine times more connection requests. So the data shows that you need a picture to actually stand out. Just be yourself. You don't have to 
do go out of the way. Just stand somewhere, look into the camera, like how I'm looking in the camera. Make sure you have a have a clear background or something which is blur, and then just take a picture. A lot of you actually take pictures. You, you kind of crop the pictures from a group picture, and you can see a shoulder next to you and all of that. Please don't do that. So that's the very first step. Take a good picture, ask your friend to do that and, and um, have a good friendly expression, just something which is inviting and put that out there. So all of you should do this very first step today. If not today, next couple of days. After you've updated, the, up, up, updated your picture, there are certain sections in your LinkedIn profile that you definitely, definitely should update. And I'm going to talk more about that in, 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 in much more detail. The first thing which a lot of people, a lot of you might not know is there is a field called location and industry, which comes at the top of your LinkedIn profile. As you can see over here, this person right under the heading, their location is California and they have an industry specified, which is next to it. So that piece is really, really important. Even if you are remote, the location is one of the key search features that a lot of employers use. And again, LinkedIn data shows, this is the data that LinkedIn collects on what employers are you doing, what, what candidates are you doing, what different people are doing on LinkedIn. A lot of employers actually search by location because lots of jobs actually start at a particular location. Even if they're offering remote, their offices might be in a particular location. So please, please, please go and add location. I know you might be thinking, what if you're open to relocate? So uh, there, is a, there is a section over there that you can actually put in that you're open to relocate. But start with a location and your industry. If you're transitioning, let's say you had a background something else, then put in the industry that you are actually looking for roles. If let's say you are a mechanical engineer, you're looking for an IT role, then put in information technology as your industry. And be specific. If you know you really want to be, let's say, an ML engineer, then use ML engineer in your industry or in like ML engineering or data science or something very specific to your industry. So that's the very first thing. A lot of people don't know about it. So please, please, please go and update those two fields. Put something there that will make you, that will make the search from, from an employer perspective narrow down to you. The other things which are very obvious, which I hope most of you already have, if you have LinkedIn profiles, is adding your education and certifications. LinkedIn is a really great uh, feature for automatically importing the official certifications from, let's say, Coursera, Udemy, some of these amazing, amazing platforms. So you can definitely import those and put them on your profile. Again, resume does not have all the space to put all of those. LinkedIn, you can put up to three, five, six, how many you want, depending on how long your page you want your page to go down, right? So definitely put your education is, is a must and definitely put your certifications over there. The other things, which is again obvious, is any of your work and internship experience. Any of, if, you, if you're a student, if you do not have any work or internship experience, put your project experience, all the projects that you've done. If you've done any GitHub projects, put them there as your experience because they show they that shows the employees that you've done something. And you don't have industry experience, but you have done something either open source or as part of your projects. Skills, of course, nobody will hire you if you don't have the skills. So put all types of skills there, not just your technical skills, but also your other skills, it could be communication skills, it could be presentation skills, it could be any of like soft skills as well. So please put that. Then this, I already talked about it, the volunteer experience. That's a great thing to actually put in your LinkedIn profile. I have all my volunteer experience in my LinkedIn profile. I would highly recommend you to go and put that as well because that tells me how you're unique, what you're passionate about, and, and what are the other things that matter to you. And then if you are part of any program or organizations, like for example, I'm part of PWIC, you can definitely put that there as well. There is an optional LinkedIn that you can enable if you want people to know where you went to as school or college as the headline as well. So you can enable that or disable that. As you grow higher in career, it's not that important from where you studied. So it's not maybe that important if let's say you're five years, seven years, 10 years experience. But if you if you are fresh out of college and your college is actually something uh, that matters or is one of the top universities from Pakistan, definitely 
enable that so they can see it in their headline. They don't have to go through the profile to actually find that about you. So those are the main sections that you need to update. Please spend some time today to actually do that. If not today, in the next few days. Because your job search, even beyond this career fair, actually can happen on LinkedIn. And LinkedIn has several, several, several ways to actually get that. And I will share some more in, in later in the slides as well. The second thing, the third thing that you need to do in your LinkedIn profile beyond those things is the headline. I have seen a lot of interesting headlines and, and some of them are really, really creative. The reason why we talked about those three things in the morning, uh, in the start of this presentation, it's sorry, it's morning for me, I know it's nighttime for you all, um, is those could be some good, good words to actually put in your headline. So, why you need a good headline is when an employer is searching, that's what they see. So you can look at the left-hand side. When I search for somebody, I see their picture. I see their name. I see a one-line summary about themselves. And that's actually coming from the headline. So you have to gain the attention of employer in that few seconds with that headline so that they go and click on you. So it's really, really important to have a really good headline out there. Headline could start, there are some examples that you can take. For example, here you can talk about what you're doing, what your passions are, and, and, and where do you align with the industry that you're talking about. So again, thinking from, think from an employer perspective, if I'm looking at like 50, 50 of the LinkedIn uh, profiles, and this is all I see, why would I go and click on you? So think from that perspective and update your headline accordingly. The next section that you need to update, again, this is something most of you might not know, is that in the LinkedIn search, in the top few pages of the search, employers only see the profiles that have at least 40 words in their summary page, in their summary section. So if you don't have a summary section which has at least 40 words in it, you will not be shown as the top search in LinkedIn. So the summary section is right there. That's the one on the top of your LinkedIn profile. And I know that for sure. A lot of you don't have enough words in there. So they don't have, you don't have 40 words. So that's the first thing you should do after change, changing your picture as well. That go ahead and update a summary section. Some good practices about summary section. Again, this is a guideline from LinkedIn. You can change it accordingly based on the industry and the work that you do. Is you can start with one or two sentences about who you are. And there's a good example over there that the person is saying that I'm a dynamic speaker, program manager, and diversity inclusion advocate. Then you can start three to five in second paragraph as a three to five sentences about your experiences, your top skills, and key passions. So that paragraph is really, really important. It's like a summary section of your resume, but very, very, like summary section resume is super short. Here you have up to 40 words or more to describe what you are. So explain the key top skills. Don't write each and every tool and each and every skill that you have in this section. Please put the top things that I should know about and that should resonate with most of the employers. Think about multiple employers, not just one company that you're looking at. So put you, put the key skills over there. Let's say you are doing machine learning with, with TensorFlow or whatever, those, those, those two, Python or R or Node.js or whatever your platform of things that you are good at. If you're a front-end developer, back-end developer, put that there with the key, key skills and passions that you have. Then in the last paragraph, in one or two sentences, Describe about your future goals. So as I was talking about previously, that's the right place to actually talk about your, your future. What you want to be, what you want to do. What are the things that interest you? For example, these days, I am looking and doing a lot of work on IoT. So my third paragraph talks about the Internet of Things and how I'm passionate about that. So you can actually divide your summary in this way. This is a good starting point for you to actually go and update that. Again, if you have less than 40 words in your summary, you're not actually showing up in the first two or three pages in the search anyways. So please spend some time today 
again today in the next few days to update the summary section of your profile. The next thing that you can do on LinkedIn is now that your profile is ready and it's good to go, how do you build a professional network? And that was the question that Asma, Asma asked. So the question was, how do you reach out and how do you network with people? So let's talk about networking on LinkedIn. There are many ways you can build a professional network on LinkedIn and, and you can connect with other folks, you can, you can know more about them, you can communicate with them, you can know more about the roles in their companies. You can, if they write an article, you can respond on that and comment on that and the, all of those are different options that you have. So I wanted to share a start with you and this is a universal fact. Maybe in Pakistan, it's even higher. This is an average of everyone. That 50% of hires result from a personal connection. Most of the companies that are hiring actually is through personal connections. And then when I say personal connections is by knowing somebody in the company or having somebody who can vouch for you or put a referral for you. That is one of the fastest or easiest way to actually get your get your profile to the company. Once your profile is in, in front of the a recruiter or the hiring manager, then you are at the same level with everybody else at that point. But that is easier and faster way to get through. And LinkedIn is a great platform to actually start that. You can connect with people in different companies. You can connect with people with different disciplines. So let's say if you are a data professional or if you are a cloud computing professional, you can connect with me because I am in that field. And you can describe why you want to connect with me. And again, I'm going to talk about what are the best ways to connect with other folks and, and, and go from that. So how does LinkedIn define a professional network? So everybody that you are in, connected to in your connections is basically your first degree connection. So at the top of your profile, when you click on somebody, it shows you if they are your direct connection or not. So everybody in that circle is your first degree connection. Everyone who they are connected to is your second degree connection. And then everyone from your first or second degree who they are connected to is your third degree connection. So the first starting point is to understand what your first degree connections are and how they're connected to your second degree connection. You can search in the when you're searching for people or, or, or particular terms. You can search by connection length as well. So the, the first or easiest way is to look at your second degree connection and see if there's somebody there that, that matches your the professional goals that you have or the career goals that you have or any of the companies that you want to work with. So you can definitely connect with them and then reach out to them and say that I want to connect with you because of this, this, this. And I'm going to share what why you should do that and what are the ways to actually write a decent message to somebody when you are when you are trying to connect with them. So this is an example of second degree connection. This person wants to send an invitation. When you are sending an invitation, there's an option to add a note. Please, please, please do that for the folks that you don't know. If you work with them or if they're friends, then that's okay to send a connection request. But if you don't know them, please spend a few minutes to learn more about them. And that should be the reason why you're connecting with them. I know a lot of folks just go on LinkedIn and they just search for anyone. Let's say they are looking for roles at Microsoft or looking for roles at, at, um, at, at, at some company. And they would just search for everybody there and start sending connect, 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 connect. That's not effective because connections and networking is not about numbers. It's not about having, let's say, 5,000, 10,000 connections. It's about the meaningful connections. It's about the folks that that would vouch for you when you need a job. The other biggest mistake that a lot of folks do is they connect with folks when they need jobs and then they go offline for like months and years. And then once they need a job, they come back to the network and they say, oh, can you please do that? That's not effective. Why would I vouch for you if I don't know who you are, first of all? Why would I vouch for you if I don't know what your skills are? If you're not active on, on LinkedIn and I don't know what you're up, what you have been up to, why would I put a referral for you? So networking, meaningful networking is really important. I'm not saying that you cannot do based on opportunity, but you should always think about to keep your network warm. 
Let's say if you have 100 connections, you don't have to be in touch with all 100 of them all the time, but build your network in a way that those folks can become your peers, mentors, allies, and sponsors, and understand the difference. Those are the folks that can vouch for you when there is a role in their team. And they would only do that if they have seen something from you. So two things I'll just repeat. I cannot emphasize enough on that. Do not randomly just start sending connect requests to everybody who you think would be a future employer for you. Build a connection with them. Understand what they have been up to, why you want to connect with them, and send them a message explaining that this is the reason why I want to connect with you. Either you want you want them to be your mentor, either you want them to be just learn more about your their company or team. Explain that in the message and then send the message to them. Then there is this feature in LinkedIn that you can go and find out your existing network. You can find out by searching and also look at the length also. You can look at your previous colleagues. So LinkedIn has this feature when you put a certain role in a certain company. It can show you everybody who worked in that company as well, who have the same put in their LinkedIn profile. So you can search through them. Same for if you're in a college, you can search for some people from the same university that you have graduated from and then connect with them. And again, once you connect with them, uh, please check why you want to connect with them. It has this automatic AI feature, which is people you might know. And that is either based on your LinkedIn profile data that how you, let's say you are an AI practitioner. So it will show you other AI pr practitioners or it would be based on how, who you, are, you have in your connection list right now. So try that out. See if in that list, you already see some folks. That should be a good connection for you. Then you can search, and as I mentioned, you can search by the, the connection length. So second degree, third degree, you can search by location. As I said, location is the most used feature in the search in LinkedIn. So you can actually search through that. You can search by their current companies, where they are, and there are several other filters. Try that out and see what you find. And in that list, think about who would be the right people to add to your network, who could be your future employers, who could be your future teammate, who could be your mentor, ally, and sponsor, and then connect with them for that reason. I will repeat one more time. Don't just go ahead and add connect, 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 connect. Send a note to them, understand who they are, spend some time reading through their profile and their work history and see where do, where does that align with your career goals and why do you want to connect with them. You can also um, search for new connections. So you can just click basically connect and then, and then search for that as well. And as I mentioned already, please add a note. This is a recommendation from LinkedIn that please always add a personalized message to make it clear to the other person that why you're reaching out. Again, uh, the things that I've already mentioned here, who should I reach out to on LinkedIn and why should I say, who, what should I say? So this is an example. You can reach out to people with common interest, with a, working at a company that you want to work at, for example. And if they are able to connect you with other folks, it could be a possible future ally or, or sponsor. That's a great way to connect with them. That would be a great reason to connect with them. And what should you say in that message? Again, who you are, how you came across their profile, and how can they help you? So if you're sending me a connect request today, please tell me how can I help you? How can I help you in your career journey? So these are all the ways that you can actually, I, I already talked about the connections and how you should build your network on LinkedIn. Keep the connection warm. One of the ways that I do is, is some of my mentors, or some of my peers, or some of my previous colleagues, I set up coffee chats with them or, 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 or tea chats with them every few months. I basically have a 10 minutes, 15 minutes, sometimes 20 minutes slot to just hang, just, just, just ask about what they have been up to what what are the things they are excited about if there are anything that i can help them with and that keeps me connected with them that keeps the connection warm and there is a question uh, i think before that if i can review your linkedin profile yes i can definitely review your linkedin profile please join the slack that we have for get hired 
and uh, I would be reviewing the LinkedIn profiles over there. So if you send me your LinkedIn profile link in next week or so, I will definitely take some time out and review it and give you some feedback over there. So this is a fact again, as I mentioned, a lot of hiring happens through connections. So LinkedIn members are four times more likely to get hired when referred. So this is again in the LinkedIn data shown that there's a higher chance for you to get hired if you are referred through the company. So through somebody who works at the company. So why would somebody refer you is again, all those things that I already talked about. If they know what you're up to, what your key skills are, and if you've kept the connection warm. Nobody is going to randomly just pick up your resume and send in a referral without knowing what you are doing and what your passions are and what your skills are. So please, 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 again, spend some time in making some meaningful connections on LinkedIn and keep them warm and connect with them and understand what they are up to because you never know in future they might be needing your help. So cannot emphasize enough on this fact. Connections on LinkedIn are really, really important these days. Make sure that you have a good set of connections there. Again, not in terms of numbers, but in terms of the quality. Not the quantity, but the quality of those connections. So again, when you message connections, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you, can, you can actually see them in your connections page and you can also look at their profile page as well. If you don't know a person that you're messaging in real life, clearly explain why you're reaching out. It's really important. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the other ways that I think is useful is sending a message to somebody by saying that you want to have a quick chat with them to understand more about their company. It's more of an informational interview. You want to know more about their company, their team and organization, especially if you know if they're hiring. So you can send a message to those folks and say that I saw this opening in your team or your company, and I wanted to know more about your team and culture and how what you're doing. If they're open for a chat, then you can send them a message and send them this connection request, and hopefully they would reply back. A lot of people don't reply back because sometimes they don't look at LinkedIn, sometimes they're not interested to, to spend some time, but it never hurts. So if you're really, really looking at a particular company and a particular team, you can look at LinkedIn and search for those folks in that team and reach out to them by explaining that this is, this is what I want to have and I want to chat with you and understand more about your company and culture and what you do in your day-to-day -day life and, and hope that they will reply back. That's another way of reaching out and building some connections with them. And once you've talked to them and once you've told them your elevator pitch, what you're up to, there's a higher chance that they will remember you, even if they don't have a position right now. If they have a position in, in future, they will think about you and they will say, oh, I know somebody who I talked to like one month ago. They would be a good fit for it. So again, this is one way that you can reach out to folks and ask for a review or an informational interview. The other option is, is directly ask referrals as well. So that's an option as well. Again, I would, I would recommend you to go this route if you really, really know the person or if they know you, a lot of people, even if you ask, they might not do referrals for you because if they don't know who you are, if you've not been a good, like a long connection with them and they have not seen anything from you, it's really hard for somebody to put your name, put their name next to your name and saying that I'm referring this person for this role. So again, if you have meaningful connections, if you have some, some, some people working in these companies where you want to apply, ask them to put a referral for you. And this is the example message that you can send them and say that I see this opening, could you please refer me for this? And hopefully they will do that. I put in a lot of referral for Microsoft, a lot of folks that I know I put in referral for them and a lot of them got hired as well. The reason I do that is I, I spend time with you understanding what you've been up to, what your goals are, and then actually I refer based on those. And in future also, if I find some role which is relevant, I try to kind of remember that I talk to you and you are one of the persons who knows this thing and that's a good fit for you. So definitely, the referrals, a lot of people do referrals. You can ask them, but only if they know what you've been up to. That's the, that's the only reason why anybody would refer you, right? So that's a great way of doing networking on LinkedIn. 
Um, request recommendation. That's another feature a lot of you might not know. So if you've worked with somebody in the past or if you have a, a colleague or a, a person, or not, let's say you're a student, you have somebody you've done a project with or, or a professor who's a, who has a LinkedIn profile, you can ask them to put a recommendation for you, which is a section in the LinkedIn profile, and they can put in some good words for you. That's, again, something an added bonus on your profile. They can leave some good remarks about you. Once they put in a recommendation, uh, it's up to you to put it on your profile or not. You can show, like, hide it as well. Let's say you don't like what they write, so you can hide it as well. But this is a great feature. You can ask your previous colleagues. You can ask your professors. You can ask other friends or like people you've worked with in terms of like professionally in some project that you've done with to leave a recommendation for you. There's another feature in LinkedIn where if you when you put skills, other people can endorse those. So endorsement is another way of knowing that they have seen you do those skills. So for example, in my if you look at there, so cloud computing, a lot of people have endorsed me for that because they have seen my work doing cloud computing. That's another feature for good feature for recruiters to look at. And then they can actually um, see that, oh, you've been endorsed by so many folks in the skill. Definitely, there's a high chance that you have that, that skill. Again, all of this does not replace the interview process. It does not replace any of that. But it makes you stand out in the pool of rest of the folks that are out there. And as I said, in my case, most of my job switches have happened only through LinkedIn through the connections that I've made and through the folks that, that saw my profile and they sent me a request saying that this is a role, uh, mostly recruiters, saying that would you be willing to look at it? And you never know if that next opportunity would could come from any of those options. So the other things that definitely you can do beyond your own connections and beyond um, beyond connecting with other folks and updating your profile, you can invest your time uh, with these connections and requests to see what your career goals are. So let's say if I want to move to a particular company next to two months or two years, I can define my goals over there and, and strategically connect with those folks and understand that what they have been doing and how I actually want to get there. That is one way that you can invest some time over there. The other thing you can do is you can like and share. So there's a lot of stuff that people do. That's another way. So you don't have to set up coffee chats for everyone, right? Some of these connections you can keep active by if they are posting something, like them, like those things, share those things, put some comments in. Again, be respectful. Whatever you do online stays there, right? Even if you go and delete, there are ways to recover those things. So please make sure that you actually um, actually like and share those things and, and connect with them. That's another way of um, like keeping the connection up. I, I really know a few folks in, in Islamabad and Pindi that literally I've never met in person. But they always like my post. They always share my post. And I am, I really, really keep up with what they have been up to. If they're posting something, I'm the first one to go and like those things as well. So that's another way to actually keep up. There are a lot of, uh, lot of um, industry figures also on LinkedIn that you can follow. They post a lot of great, comp uh, great content. For example, Bill Gates does. A lot of, uh, like, uh, Elon Musk does. So you can follow those folks as well and like that and share that because that adds values to your connection. So if I you see an article that is relevant, let's say a, a, a new breakthrough in some kind of programming language uh, or any work that you're doing, share that article. That's a great way to add value to your network. The other folks that will find value in your content will automatically come back for more. So that's another way to actually engage and add value to your LinkedIn network. The last two things a lot of people don't do and don't, sometimes don't know is the groups, right? So LinkedIn has a, has these groups. Groups could be a like-minded minded folks. It could be related to a particular area, like recruiting teams and things like that. So you can definitely join those groups and, and, and exchange insights. So I am part of a lot of those big data, cloud computing, and AI groups because that's, that's what I'm doing these days. And I get to connect with other folks in the same field. If I find an article over there, I share on my profile and vice versa. So I share stuff there. And then there are some groups that are private. So you have to ask for to join the group. Some groups are public. So definitely go and check them out as well. And then uh, it's not about just taking everything in LinkedIn. So give back as well. So give your testimonials. Give your endorsement to other folks, people you have worked with. Give your recommendations. If somebody has asked a recommendation from you, if you think that they have done something good or they, 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 they are a good connection or the work they've done has been useful for you, please put in your recommendation for them. Uh, if, you, if you've got a request 
please do that. The endorsement, you don't need a request. You can go on anybody's profile and actually go and endorse them. For example, if you like my presentation today, you can go on my profile and say that I have communication skills. I have good presentation skills. I don't know if I have them. Just please, yeah, only in that case, do that. So those are all the things beyond the profile connections and your branding that you can do, and you can still um, you can still achieve other goals. So all the all the networking and very targeting, looking at roles might not land your job. Sometimes some of these things actually land your job. So I I tell you one story. So one startup here in Seattle, uh, the CEO actually I wrote a blog about. Uh, Game of Thrones um, data analysis. I did analysis of Game of Thrones data, and I put a blog about that. And I put a blog on my LinkedIn. Three days later, a CEO here in of a startup reached out to me saying that they are looking for a chief data officer, and I would be a good fit for that. Like I had no clue. I never looked at that company before. I never knew that they existed even. And they reached out to me saying that would you be willing to interview for that role? So. As I said, you never know where your next opportunity comes from. So things that you put out there in your blog, on your LinkedIn, uh, these are great ways for others to know and get noticed. All of these things, spend some time, think if they're, they're adding value to your future, your career goals, and then go through from that. I just wanted to share that story with you to understand that the, the, all the strategic connections and all of that, you might still do that, you might not still get through some of the rules. And some of the roles might just come through for these other things. So there's some new features that have been added to LinkedIn. For example, open to work. There is a way to actually show other folks that you, you're open to work. And you can add that hashtag. There is actually an option to, um, to actually show that only to recruiters. Because let's say you are in a company and you're trying to switch. Uh, you can put that there but you don't want your colleagues to see that, right? So LinkedIn is very smart about that. Only recruiters will be able to see, but there is this caveat that recruiters from your own company would be able to see that as well. So if you're really open to work, uh, you can definitely put that in your profile. Uh, this is another interesting fact. There are 34 million plus job seekers on LinkedIn, and there are so many millions and millions of jobs every single day added. So your profile is one of those 34 million profiles. Depending on the role and the company and the, and the location that you are, they would be, uh, you have to find out if you're the right fit or not. So that's the feature I was talking about, the open to work feature. You can add uh, that, you click get started using the option on the top card for your profile and you can add that and you can choose whether you want to share it open to work with your LinkedIn members only or um, with, with all the LinkedIn members or just the recruiter. So you can choose that. And it will make this uh, like a green um, circle around that. And you can add what types of jo ro roles that you're actually open for as well, like in the example here. So that's a great feature. Check it out if you're looking for roles and update your LinkedIn profile based on that. Uh, other things that I want to quickly go over um, is other things that you can do in LinkedIn is to how do you search? So you can search in LinkedIn through all of these things, through a keyword, through a job title, based on a particular company. You can actually add alerts. That's a really, really great feature. If you're really in the job market and you're looking for roles, you can, based on these terms, you can put an alert. So if, let's say tomorrow there is a role in, in a company that you've been looking for and it's not open right now, you can keep an alert for that title and then you can send uh, it will send an alert to you based on the frequency so in this case you can see a daily alert will come out if there's any in terms of email notifications if there are any roles open for the term that i'm searching for let's say i'm looking for a data engineer role so definitely try to use this feature you'll see an alert automatically the you the first one to get that as soon as a job shows up with that search uh, make sure you search correctly because there are as I said, millions of jobs there. So make sure that you use the, the combination of the job title and the company and location uh, or the combination. So depending on where you are, and then you can get a bunch of alerts and see if those roles are right for you and go and apply. So do check that out. It's a great feature. Uh, there is also a great feature. Um, this is actually a great check for you. So once you've updated your LinkedIn profile, 
go and check out this section which says the jobs you may be interested in. This is an AI based feature in LinkedIn, which takes the data from your profile and shows similar jobs. So this is a good way to look at and see if you are th if the things that you have put in profile actually match to the roles or not. So let's say if you are a data engineer and if you go here and you find out roles which are not data engineer at all, that means that your profile is not reflecting your data engineering experience. So that's a great way to actually go back and update your profile. So check this feature out again. It is actually based on your current work experience, skills, and location information. It shows you the roles in a similar location uh, with the similar skills and work experience that you have put in your LinkedIn profile. So that's a great way for you actually to check um, that if your LinkedIn profile is good enough or not, and if it matches the right set of roles. If you're transitioning, then definitely it will not match. That's okay. So if you are in the in one industry and transitioning to something else, it will not match. Uh, the other things you can do, a lot of companies actually look at fo folks that have their, that follow their company. So if you want to work at a certain company, go follow them. That way you keep up to date about any of their like job openings, anything that they post about as well. A lot of recruiters actually search. Uh, when they search, they put in a checkbox which says that uh, follow, follow company. So that way they see the folks only uh, that follow their company. So if you really want to work at one particular company or set of companies, go follow them. That's uh, another thing to know about. As I mentioned that the recruiters do filter some specifically on sometimes on uh, people who follow their companies. Some extra credit, as I already mentioned, um, LinkedIn has LinkedIn Learning. Uh, some of them are free courses. Some of them are premium. So if you have LinkedIn Premium account, you can actually go and uh, take the in-demand skills. You can def join different groups. So that's the page where you go, opportunity.linkedin.com. Actually go ahead and um, look at some of the skills. Uh, there are like hundreds of courses, like I don't know, thousands of courses available on different things that you can take. You can actually define your learning paths. So let's say you want to become a Python developer. So there's like Python 101, then there's like, like mid-level course and there's more experience course. So you can define your learning path. You can put some dates and goals for yourself and take them and then uh, go from one point to another. So there's a really great way. LinkedIn Learning it has a lot of great content. Um, please check that out. Uh, beyond LinkedIn Learning, there's a lot of other online places where you can go and upskill yourself on several things. And it's not just need to be technical. It could be anything like presentation skills, leadership skills, any of the soft skills. There are like hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of those courses out there. Uh, please check them out at opportunity.linkedin.com. Uh, there is this also the soft skills, as I mentioned. So that's the section it talks about like the soft skills. Again, check them out, uh, see if any of those courses make sense to you. There is this section, which is really, really important for job seekers. So there is a section for uh, prepare for interviews. Uh, there is interview prep, video tips and all of those things. And there is a practice of like 26 or so behavioral questions So questions like, tell me about a time when you were not able to deliver on time. What did you do? So there is this very interesting course and um, some content on LinkedIn Learning. Go check that out. Um, again, it's on opportunity.linkedin.com. Join groups. I explained that already. You can meet other people in the same industry. You can meet your alumni, people with similar interests, and you can stay connected. With that, I'm done with the, my presentation for this session. I will actually go and uh, go through the questions now, but I do have some resources for you that you can actually use for your um, for your uh, for your LinkedIn profiles. So if you go to this link, which is the tiny URL uh, y62xz2fd, a really mouthful to say that. Uh, that's the link that you can use. Uh, there are four resources over there. This is all official LinkedIn material. Uh, please do not do, do not do any copyrights type things over there. This is the LinkedIn material, so use it for yourself only. Um, when you go there, you'll find four materials. One of them is actually about, um, as a student, what you should do. There is one about all the things that I talked about today, about what you should update your profile with. So your exercise at home today is to actually go ahead and do these three things. First, practice your brand statement. Practice who you are. What's your elevator pitch? How do you make a very strong impression? And why in context of LinkedIn is use that in your summary and your in your headline. 
That's the first thing you need to write down and put it in your LinkedIn. Then you have to go and update your summary, picture, headline, and skills. That's the minimum you need to do. And then all of the other things that are talked about, adding connections, doing LinkedIn courses, connect with other people, all of that are additional add-ons that you can do. So with that, I'll keep the link up. Uh, this is my LinkedIn and Twitter. You can follow me and you can connect with me if you think I'll be a right fit for you uh, to add any value to your network. Definitely send me a message. I will connect with you. With that, I'll go through the chat and see if there are any questions that I've missed and, um, and I can answer those. So there's a question. Should, should we be specific in our LinkedIn or we should write in journal? For instance, my interests are machine learning, programming development, computer vision, but they are totally different fields. Yeah, so the, uh, Bilal, the question, I think um, it's, it's very relevant. Uh, I think it depends on what you want to do, what your future goals are. If you want to stay in a specific field, let's say you are, <clears throat> excuse me, let's say you are, um, you're writing an algorithm with computer vision or you are working on a particular algorithm on computer vision, then you should be specific and then you should write about that only. But LinkedIn, as I said, is a 360 degree views of you. So you can definitely go beyond that one area and talk about your other interests. So my LinkedIn and, and I and again I, and a general advice that I have for you, especially if you're starting off in early in your career, it's okay to not be very specific because you're still trying out different things. But if I see somebody with five years or six years of experience and they have like six different disciplines, then what it shows me is that they don't know what they want to do. So as you grow higher in your career, focus on the things that you're really good at and tailor your profile based on that. That would be my feedback. If you're starting off or you're early in your career, then you can definitely add other disciplines. And some of the things that you mentioned here, I think they're all kind of related. So data analysis, machine learning, computer vision, they're all related. So I would not say that they are like very different. So definitely, I think you can add that. And you mentioned programming. So this is, again, a common myth. Again, this session is not about that. I Since I'm in the data field for the last 13 years, a lot of people think that uh, to be a good data scientist, it's okay to be a not um, not be a good programmer. I, I don't think that's true. So uh, they you need to have good programming skills. You need to have good statistics skills. And you need to have good analysis skills to be a, <laughs> excuse me. To be um, to be um, um, to be a good data scientist. So again, I will I will mention that. Um, give me one second. Yeah. So uh, so please try to be as as specific as you can as you grow high in your career. But if you're early in your career, try to. It's okay to put more stuff there. Hope it answers your question. Uh, the next question we have is, I've transitioned from finance field to project management and now have an experience for four years. How to brand How to brand that? Okay. So same way, right? How I explained to you, you can talk about all the previous experiences, but in the summary section, you can definitely add what your passions are, what you are doing. If you are transitioning, if you're doing any type of certifications for a project manager, let's say PMP or some of those things, please put that out there because that tells the employers that that you are interested in this field and that's why you're transitioning. Um, so in LinkedIn experience section, put the ones that you already have. In the skills section, if the one, the skills you already have, think about what are the other things I want to mention here. When you're transitioning, there are skills that you can transition. So let's say you are in the finance field, but you might be good with numbers. So you might be good with uh, the soft skills that you could have of communications working with diverse teams, working collaboration. So those skills are transferable from one to another. And try to make sure that your LinkedIn profile highlights those skills so that you are more attracted towards where you're going. Again, if you have any certifications in the field that you're going, please mention them because that adds value. If you don't have work experience in the transition, like the where you're going, then some types of, certif some types of uh, certifications, things like that are really helpful. So really highly re would recommend that to look at that and, and add that. And how do you brand yourself? Again, you brand yourself by putting it out on your LinkedIn that 
you're passionate about this, 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 and this is what you want to do in your summary section. In your headline also, you can add that, that you're looking for project management roles or not just looking, you could just mention that project management uh, experience, whatever you want to put over there. So, so the, the, somebody who's looking for project managers, once they look at your profile, you, they see that you have the right passion to actually do that. And then you've done something related to that, some kind of skills that a project manager needs are in your profile. The other question, next question, moving to that one, Lal, um, I have a, I made one page resume and a fresh graduate. I will build also another CV, which is two pages, to describe all my projects, which should as in the last interview, you saw details, he suggested to use details to two pages. Do you have any suggestions? Okay. I think uh, it varies by companies and the person who is interviewing. I personally do not fret on if I get like two pages um, resume. But I know people in my team and other teams and um, that don't have that much time to go through everything that you write in your resume, right? So the longer your resume is, the longer interview has to spend to understand what you've been up to, which they should be doing anyways. But a lot of people don't have that kind of time, just being very honest with you. So one page resume is important, um, in, is good in two ways. One, it's easier um, it's easier for somebody to get a quick glance of what you've been doing. And then highlight in a way that if your top two, three projects should be on the top. Again, Milan, if you're on the Slack, please send me your resume also. I would be happy to review it and, and give you some feedback. I could also give you feedback what you can trim, what you cannot trim. In terms of your, if you're a fresh graduate, uh, the resources that I shared early on, it has more information about what you should do on your LinkedIn um, as a student. And, and some of that applies to your resume as well. So what I don't like in resumes, this is just my personal opinion, is when you're describing a project, you describe each and every technology and tell me like everything that you've done in the project. That does not actually solve, like that does not help me answer the question that why should I hire you? What you should write in your work experience over there is, what you did it, why you did it, and how did you did it? And those three questions should be answered in terms of numbers. So the most important part that a lot of people that I see, especially with fresh graduates, they miss in their resume, is they don't mention why they did it. So if you wrote an algorithm which solved a XYZ problem, how did you improve it? Put the numbers there that this algorithm did search accuracy by 10% or 20% or 5% or whatever. That helps me understand that you understand the business problem you're trying to solve that. A lot of projects that you do as, as an undergraduate, uh, this, is a, this is a common issue. It's not saying that this happens with everyone. This is a common issue. A lot of people just mention that what they did, they forget about why they did it. So when you're doing a project, always ask your professor or your, or your team that why you're doing that. What is it solving? What could be the improved, a version of this for the uh, for the customer or end user. If you wrote an app, write those numbers. How many downloads were there? If you wrote something uh, that that is improving in your like something in your GitHub, e people I've seen they even add like how many GitHub um, uh, GitHub. Uh, I'm, I'm right now blanking on the word like, like how many GitHub copies people have got. So how many people have actually uh, uh, taken your code? So put those numbers in your resume and summarize that. Um, and if you do it like the summary way how I'm describing, I think it will fit in one page. At max, two page. Uh, but honestly, uh, these days, nobody has time. Time is of the essence. Nobody has time to go through five, two pages, even three pages of resumes. I've seen like four pages resumes as well. Um, uh, yeah, try to make it short. Uh, yeah, so Rimsha is asking how they can contact me. So I already explained that. If you are on the Get Hired Slack, uh, please reach out over there. Uh, register at the gethired.pvic.org. And that's where you have a Pakistan event. We have a Pakistan event coming up next Friday. Uh, really, really excited for all of you. We have a great lineup of speakers and companies are coming in. We're also launching Career Map soon. So I know we are going to talk about that in our wrap up session. Uh, next question from Ikra, what will be the impact of LinkedIn profile on our resume? So as I mentioned, there's two or they two both go hand in hand. So resume is something that you put in for a particular role when you're applying in a company, right? It has to match with the with the dis job description. It has to have those minimum like number of words that pass the ATX system. So ATX system is what um, 
uh, what a lot of companies use to match. If your resume does not have the terms that are in the job, you get automatically, your resume gets automatically rejected unless you went through referral. So it's very important that your resume is tailored to the job. It has the right search words that are in the in that particular role that you're applying. LinkedIn is way beyond that. It's not just about one role. It's about your future roles. It's about somebody that can future in future connect with you and can actually you they can be a future employer. So all of those things um, uh, that that are there, they are important. Um, so yeah, LinkedIn profile how how will be it will impact it can impact in many ways it can get you meaningful connections it can get your name out there uh, let's say you are an ai practitioner if you put a github project if you put it uh, on your linkedin i if i see more a lot of people in my connections doing that i actually go and check them out and i actually post or repost or share that with other folks that might be in the same field so that is one way of getting your name out, getting your work out. If you have done some work in open source, again, put them over there. Resume is a very limited space for putting each and every project there. LinkedIn has more space that you can do that. Again, don't make your LinkedIn profile like five pages long that somebody has to scroll down. Keep it, keep it concise and short, but add these extra stuff that you don't have space to put in link uh, in your resume and of course the impact as i mentioned with my story there are several companies and people you never know um, that will reach out to you and say that this is the role that we have and uh, are you willing if you if they see content from you if, they, if you are your profile has all the data that that matches their role so it's more about your future employer it's more about those connections it's more about connecting effectively and making sure you you connect and and be out there in the social yeah, so this is the gethired.pvic.org. Uh, that's where you register. And once you register, you'll get an email which has the Slack link. So connect, uh, join that Slack. I will be looking at some of your profiles next week um, on LinkedIn and uh, on the Slack. And if you send me your LinkedIn profiles, I'll be more than happy to review them. Uh, next question, after making connections related to your field and area, also the except how do I proceed my connection for the building manager? Yeah. So, as I said, I gave you a few tools about that, right? So there are a few ways you can engage. You can connect with them. You can like, share stuff, all of those things. If you're looking for an informational interview, ask them. Like, just ask them. Once you are in your network after some time, sometimes even before adding them to the network, you can ask them in the message that this is the, your intention. This is what you want. And, and connect with them. A lot of people are very afraid of asking. What is the worst that would happen? They would say no or not reply. That's OK. I mean, that that happens. So um, just ask them. And again, a lot of people uh, do that only when they know you, right? So the way to know you is, again, all of those things that I mentioned. You you kind of stay active on the LinkedIn profile. You like the stuff that they are doing. You reshare the stuff that they're doing. If they're really passive and not doing much, then they might not be checking LinkedIn at all, right? So, um, so yeah, just message them and say that this is how we want to uh, over time, I have, uh, as I mentioned, I have acquired a lot of mentors. I've acquired a lot of sponsors and allies. And now I am a mentor for a lot of folks, right? So, so it's very important to stay those connections warm. All of my mentees, I I talk to them every six weeks. I either talk to them via via some kind of call, or I actually actually talk to them and just send them a message on LinkedIn or whichever uh, platform that we are connected. What are they up to? Can they summarize what 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 they have been doing? And if there is anything I can help them with. Um, so it's very important to stay connected and, and build that network over time. And, and, and that's how you grow networking. There was a talk yesterday in our US event. Network is your net worth. Uh, we will upload that video soon. Please check that out. It's really, really great talk and talks about a lot of great things. Um, so active networking, warm connections, making sure you stay in touch uh, and building that over time with your mentors, sponsors and allies is very important. One thing I, I want to tell you that the same set will not remain forever, right? The mentors that I had six years ago, they are now, let's say, my peers, right? And in future, they could be my sponsor and allies in other ways. So the, you, the, that, that relationship can change, but they are still in my network. So the titles and how they interact and I interact with them might change. So you never know what, what what's there for you in future. So uh, yeah, I would say just recommend you to, to message them, but again, only if you think they're they are um, that's the right way of doing that, and if they are the right connection for you to do that. Uh, how can I register? So already mentioned that. So you know, I'll just put that out again. Go to gethired.pvic.org. There's a Get Hired 2020 Pakistan event. 
on the main page. Register for it. There's a form. You'll put some information. Once you register, you'll get an email which has the Slack link uh, that you should join. Uh, is this session recorded? Yes, Maham already re uh, replied on that. Um, so yes, this session is recorded. Uh, and you it will be available for you uh, to view later as well and you can share and like and other things um yeah this is a good question from Alal. who are the right people uh, we should ask for referrals uh, the one who posted the job or can we ask some teacher or someone doesn't know about the job post posting yes so a uh, referral the person who is posting the job i think most of the time recruiters are the one who are posting the job so and most of the time they are not going to be the one who put the referral referrals are usually from person who is working in the team or a hiring manager or somebody who knows the team is is when they would put a referral in you so most of the time referral is through personal connections is through people you know if a teacher or somebody or a colleague a past colleague um, a friend right so referral is usually those folks. Uh, the person who is posting, if you send them a referral, I I I'm, I would say with 70% assurance that they will not most probably refer you. And again, you should not connect these folks just when you need it, right? Again, I'm not going to, uh, to emphasize again on that, but the point is when you are in the job search, you should have enough connections by that time to connect with these folks and they already know what you've been up to. Let's say you're starting off now fresh and out of college, then build that network, spend some time on LinkedIn, spend some time with these folks, set up informational, set up uh, the right goals for you. What are your goals in the next six months? Who do you want to connect with, with you? Let's say you are very targeted about a particular company, XYZ, then start looking at LinkedIn profiles, start looking at those people, start connecting with those people, and actually start sending some invites for informationals, getting to know them. Once they know enough about you, they will automatically start referring you. And referrals can happen both ways. One official referral where you take a resume and put that in the system. An unofficial referral is something comes up, let's say in six months, and I remember, oh, I talked to this person, Bilal, and he was good at, at machine learning, and he mentioned something about vision vision project. Let me check, his, check that out. And I might send you a message saying that, oh, I have this role open, Bilal. Do you think you're a good fit for it? If you're a good fit, send me a resume. I'll put in referrals for you. So that's a great way of like building the network. A lot of people do that. Um, I personally do that a lot. A uh, lot of people don't do that as well, but for them, you can just send them a message saying that this is a role I saw in your company. Um, would you be willing to talk to me to know more about it? And could be, would you be willing to put a referral for me? Again, tell them about yourself more before you actually ask for referral. Tell them enough data about you because why would they put their name next to yours, right? They have to know about you. They have to know that you are the right fit. You have the right skills. So those would be my uh, my feedback or comments. Um, what else? Uh, go to the questions. Okay. So. This question, do you think in order to pursue managerial post later after going for five years experience after having a degree in MCSCS, that there is a person will be hired from a is necessary to have a degree in software project management in order to switch to the role? Yeah, I think um, there was a session earlier today about the right career path that you can watch. Um, I think um, different roles have different skill sets. So right now I'm an engineering manager. I have been a tech, like, tech lead for a long time and I've been in the data space for a long time. I, I just want to put in a plug here or put in like a thought process in your mind here, which, which is about leadership is not a position, it's it's an action. Think about it. It's You don't need a title to show that you're a leader. If you are already doing the stuff that you need, you're already a leader. A lot of people focus on these titles and switch to I'm, I'm not saying this for this particular question per se, but I just want you to think about from the skills perspective. So if you're already communicating, if you're already doing the collaborations, if you're already working with cross teams, you're already showing that you're a leader. And that's how a lot of opportunities come your way. And somebody in your company sees that, oh, you're already doing this, 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 and you have this extra stuff that you're doing. I think you would be a right fit for this manager position. And that's where the, the, the word sponsors comes in. Those are the people that talk about you when you're not in the room. Those are the people that advocate for you when you're not in the room. And you really need those folks because they are the ones who will elevate your next 
career role for you. They are the ones who will give you that next opportunity, that next seat at the table. So again, I would just summarize uh, for this particular one for the skill set. I think for a managerial position, there are few role, few skills that you need. One, you need to have uh, different people have different manager, managing styles, right? You can look about there's like seven man, um, seven principles of um, leadership and you can read more about that. But uh, the as a manager, every team is different. What I'm looking for a manager in my team or what I'm looking for my manager is having that mentorship, coaching, and then understanding of what is the strategic, uh, strategy for my team, where we should take from today onwards right so it's it's important to have those skills in your company if you have those backgrounds you've taken a break or if you've switched different uh, kind of roles i would recommend to talk to a manager in your in, in a similar role and ask about what they do in in their day-to-day -day basis what are their key deliverables what are the skills they think are the right fit and then go from there so definitely talk to those folks and um, I think if you even if you switch roles and you've switched degrees, you don't need to have all the things that are defined in there. You, if you have some of the skills and you have the right soft skills, I think for a good manager, having the right soft skills are really, really important. Technical skills, if you're an engineering manager, yes, but not that important as soft skills. Because if you're a really, really good technical person, but if you can't solve your employee's problem, like if, if they're, they come to you to a problem and they're not able to solve that, you're not empathetic. If you not understand those things, you're not going to be a good manager. So I would recommend uh, to go and talk to current managers in your team and um, and see what, what the skills they have. Uh, talk more about them, what a typical day looks for them. What are the top two or three things they look for when they are promoting folks in, in a similar role and, 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 and see where the gap is and, and, and try to do those, um, those. And as I said, leadership is an action. So if you're already taking actions in your team and you're showing that, um, there's a chance the leadership already knows that, um, that you have the right skills. So somebody said that they want to connect with me on LinkedIn. Definitely, I will connect with you. Send me a request. Um, I will connect with you. Uh, can a person having degree in MSCS and certain certification data science uh, domain can pursue career in this field and later can be a scholarship award? In data science, I want to know how much high chance are there to earn full Um I don't know if I know enough about the Fulbright scholarship uh, scholarship process uh, i'll definitely take this question and ask other leads uh, we do have a scholarship lead um, her name is aisha javed and pwic i will definitely ask her to reach reach uh, back to you um, i've taken this question definitely we'll get back i honestly don't know the answer about um, the fulbright scholarship part of it the part about data science and the certifications that you mentioned um, uh, data science is a relatively newer field, right? Uh, although the work was there for a long time, I, back in 2006, my degree project was actually something very similar, but it was not that fancy back at the time. We never used to call it data science or um, these things, right? Um, but uh, a question about that, I think data science, there are many ways to get into data science. There is again a talk that we did uh, for the US prep days, and I think we have a talk tomorrow for data as well. So please stay tuned for that about um, what, uh, what you can do as a data scientist and what are different roles in data science disciplines and, and definitely ask this question over there. Um, and, and and I've taken this as a, as a note to get back to you. Um, I've graduated in finance and digital marketing. Apart from getting certification in Google, how can I convey my freelancing experience? Yeah, so all of your freelancing experience, put them in your LinkedIn, right? So most of the, like at least top two or three experiences, any profiles that you've done, especially any work that you've done, highlight that, highlight why you did that, highlight the numbers that you've achieved with your marketing, put them in your profile. That's how you get out, out your, your future employer know about it. So freelancing, any open source projects, anything that you've done like that is experience that you can put in your LinkedIn. You can also put that in your resume in a shorter version of that, uh, but definitely put that and that's the right way to actually tell your future employees that, that you can do that. Um, next question, how qualified should a person be to refer me or endorse me? For instance, a colleague who is not qualified as I'm, uh, as I am, but has seen me working, can you refer me? Yes, um, I think anyone who's working in a company can refer you. Different companies have different referral kind of rules and stuff. So for example, um, in, in Microsoft, the, the, 
the the role uh, for referring for somebody on engineering discipline they they prefer if they, it comes from engineering person um but they still take if, if it's if, let's say a marketing person is referring or engineering folks if they still take it uh it depends on like who that person is and where they are in the company and if they can actually uh, the the best way is to get your resume to the hiring manager if the hiring manager has your resume whichever way it gets to them that's the your fastest way to actually get screened right because the hiring manager is the one who is deciding hiring manager or the recruiter through the initial processes is the main person who's making those decisions again it varies by company it could be different different places so um check on that and it doesn't matter that that person has to be future like super qualified again it depends on the company dynamics as well um this is the talk choosing the right career path one that we did um earlier today and I'll take one more question, which is, um, as my final project was in blockchain, not of intentions of fresh days in blockchain, so I should change my career again. Um, that's that's a good question. I think let's have a chat chat offline on Slack about, and if you can send me your LinkedIn and resume, I can I can look at your your current projects and advise you based on what you've done so far and say and answer those questions based on that right because i don't know enough based on just the blockchain thing and then say because there could be some um skills in your blockchain experience that you can take to a more generic role let's say you're mentioning about react native and stuff so let's talk offline on that share your linkedin profile profile to me and your resume on the slack and i would be happy to give you some feedback based on that uh one one last thing i would like to say a lot of people actually just change disciplines because they don't see roles um, or they don't see jobs that's a good reason for you to do that but if you are really really passionate about your field um, then one advice i would i would just say that don't give up right if 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 blockchain is something that that really is your interest uh wait a little uh, there would be somebody who's who would be hiring right it's blockchain is really coming up and there are a lot of roles coming up in that area so that's just my personal advice it's up to you if you want to take it uh, but yeah please share your linkedin um, and your resume with me and i can i can look at your skills and we can have a discussion about what are the things that you can do further and and what are the skills that are transferable and yeah this is the other profile uh, other other session from today which is the building a very strong profile please check that out we also had a very uh, great session about uh, this one the the career path we also had a one about uh, having a strong impression so please check them out on our facebook page which is the pakistani women computing and if you go to the video tab you will find all of that there so it seems like i've answered all the questions there was one that i've taken a note for for the full bright scholarship um i think okay you've shared on the slack okay that's great um i will take a look at that um after this session sometime today or tomorrow or monday and i'll get back to you bila on this um so so with that i'll put the link again to the resources if you have not noted it down yet please go to the resources take some time today to actually uh, update your linkedin profile share your updated linkedin profile with me i'll be happy to review it and uh, we can go from there um uh, with that uh, the session is ending um we are going to have um, maham zobi and janat back to answer and do wrap up of your first day of uh, prep days and i'm going to just hang out here also to answer any questions about the overall get hired event um any other questions that you have and uh, again thank you so much for joining me for this linkedin session i hope that you go today and update your linkedin profiles i hope more 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 of you see you on linkedin i'm very active on linkedin so um definitely um definitely would like to connect with you and bilal i see you're saying that should i send you yeah send me your two pager is cv as well if one pager then better but two pager is also fine to send that over i'll i'll have a look at that So again thank you so much for this this listening to me about linkedin um i hope you all rock your linkedin profile today and tomorrow and next week and have, we'll look forward to see more of that so with that i'll have maham zobi and janat here and we'll be happy to answer any questions about the get hired event and anything that you have thank you hey everyone from from I am going to add Zobia and Janat here also. 
and um, so thank you so much mazma that was an amazing <laughs> workshop slash, slash session and even i learned i thought i was i had a kick ass linkedin profile but i have learned a couple of things so thank you so much for that um no worries So with this, we conclude our day one uh, activities for the prep days of uh, Get Hired pa- Pakistan. Zobia and Zunat are back with me. I think you guys had similar kick-ass events like me. Yeah? Yeah, those were all, I think, great sessions. And the um, uh, same goes for me. I think I s- attended the session with Farah for interview prep guidance, and I just was not ready for it to get over because I was enjoying it, learning so much. So... I hope the candidate also had similar experience and learned a lot. Yeah, and I think we were talking about it as well that the engagement has been super awesome today. So thanks everyone for attending these sessions and all the uh questions that you've been asking. I think they were also very useful to everybody. If you have any other questions for uh tomorrow or in general about the career fair, please feel free to post them and we can answer them as well. Absolutely. So while you guys write the message uh, any questions let's get over our day of tomorrow like day 2 what are we going to do there zobia Sure so on day 2 we have like uh, around 12:30 we're going to start our interview prep guidelines for all of these tracks uh, the software engineering design data and uh, product management kind of roles so you would just log in to or at, uh, join the session that you are going to interview for the track and then there are going to be detailed guidelines for preparation of those interviews and after that session we are going to have like we'll, we'll be open for all the mock interviews for those of you who have the slots already you'll be having the interviews please be on time for your mock interviews by the way connect on time because you already uh, uh, like you already have just 30 minutes don't waste your time um don't be like even a few minutes late and uh, apart from that i think those who don't have the slots i already mentioned you can connect on slack and you can mock interview each other you could please start a thread and ask others who who might be interested to also do the mock interviews for the same track and in mock interview each other and learn from each other so that's about tomorrow jenna do you want to add something no i i think that's that's all uh, i'm also just sharing the agenda that you were talking about so everybody is clear on the timings but uh, i think most of the mock, uh, mock interview slots are now booked but if you uh, still find something feel free to book it and uh, feel free to also like take advantage of that that's do a couple of t- tips about tomorrow's mock interviews who uh, are uh, all of the people who have gotten some sl- uh, slots uh, like zobia said be on time for sure turn on your video cameras treat this like a real interview you would have with a real person a real recruiter uh if you want your resumes to be uh reviewed just bring them along and ask your mentor if they would uh, if they're open to it and maybe some are and they can give you like a, a very hands on approach to that also um and i would really like to get over get over a couple of faq points here like uh, what was was like we are about to launch a career map very soon for pakistan day we had something similar with uh, the our north america region so career map is going to be a uh, visual aid for all the companies uh, that have listed their jobs in get hired and you guys can just go over there it is open for all candidates all registered uh, get hired candidates and you can just select Uh, any uh, company it, it's it's the h- kind of like how a virtual representation of how an actual career fair is you have smaller booths you have rows of uh, uh, rows of booths and you can just click and go to their specific uh, pages and you will see all of their jobs listed for that specific company and then you can apply from there for sure so i see a question about how to book a slot for interview uh can you guide again so all of the mock interview slots are available on the gethired.pwic.org page in our prep uh and our prep da- app make sure to select pakistan and check for any few any open slots uh, i know uh, i have opened up some slots for myself but i know that all of my slots are booked they got booked really fast so i cannot really um guarantee at the moment that uh, slots are available but definitely do check them out maybe there's some some still are 
So, yeah, that would be it from my side, I think. Yeah, I think just wanted to add a few things. So next week, you should expect two or three types of communications coming your way. Uh, definitely, as, as Lovia and uh, Janatha mentioned, join the Slack. Slack is the fastest way to get all the announcements. Um, follow our social media pages like our Twitter page and our Facebook page. We have all the updates coming that way. Monday is when we are announcing the career map. Uh, if not Monday and Max Tuesday, it would be announced. So the moment it gets announced, all the 18 companies that you've heard in the morning um, that are coming, amazing, amazing companies, they would have their landing pages with all the roles that you can go and start applying. So of course, the sooner you start applying, the sooner they can start screening and they can actually get back to you. So keep, keep an eye out for that announcement. It's really important for you to go and start applying. But before you start applying, you need to have your resume. You need to have everything updated. So that's why we're having this this weekend. So spend some time this weekend to update your resume and, and make sure that it's up to date and use the resume review Slack channel for us to review that. Uh, the second most important announcement that you will have next week is, is how to join the event that's happening October 2nd. So that is another email that you will send out sometime midweek uh, to go and log in over there. And that's the event that you, where you will get to interact with all of the amazing other, I don't know, 1,600 people that are coming to the event, all of the hiring managers that are coming to the event. We have some really, really, really great inspirational talks. We have an IT minister coming, so it's it's a really really a full day of lots of great um, uh, great connections that you can make there. So definitely re, uh, uh, look out for those two emails that will be coming, and you will get those emails if you have registered. So again, if register on gethired.pvic.org, go to the Get Hired Pakistan on the main page. There's the Get Hired Pakistan one. Fill in the form, and then you will get the registration. If you have registered you'll get these communications and then again, join the Slack. So those would be my uh, few things for you to, uh, to remember for next week. And again, all the best. Uh, all of us here on PWIC are here to support your career journey. Um, really, really thank you to um, Jannat, Zobia and Maham for putting these prep days together. Uh, this would not have been possible. We have got like 35 plus mentors who are doing mock interviews tomorrow. Uh, really, really grateful to them for spending so much time. Uh, we have people here in the US and other rest of the world also doing interviews for you and doing mock interviews as well. So we are all here to support you. We are all here to cheer you. And we are all here to make sure that you make the best move in your career, uh, career for, for whatever is next for you. Um, so yeah. Thank you so much. Um, thank you uh, for all three of you, Janet, Zobia, and Maham. I know it was a lot of work to get everybody on board, get everybody's links, and get everybody um, together. Uh, but I think that this is great, and all of the all of you um, uh, hopefully enjoy it and hopefully uh, appreciate it. Um, I, I am really, really thankful. Yes, and it's not over yet. We have a full day back tomorrow. So uh, yeah. tune in for the um, domain specific tracks and uh, make the best use out of the mock interview that we have scheduled for you as well. So thank you, everyone. And with that, I guess we will wrap up. So thank you and goodbye from our side. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Have a nice day. Love this.